Well, there's an amazing prophet. His name is Elijah. And Elijah hears about what was going on in the nation of Israel. That basically it was like this. The nation of Israel had one foot in the world and one foot in the things of God. It's a really difficult position to stand in. Because one foot in the world, you're dealing with all the things of God that you know about. But one foot in the things of God, you're feeling guilty about all the things you're doing in the world. And you never go forward for either of them. And Elijah started calling the nation out on this. Elijah goes, you know what? I believe with all of my heart that God's been forgotten too long in this nation. And as a matter of fact, you, you play around with this and you play around with that. You're worshiping um, some other gods, just toying around with that craziness. But on this side, you, you still know that your heritage has been in the one true God. And he's saying, I'm calling you to make a choice. I'm calling you to, 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 to decide today who you're going to serve. Don't any longer be lukewarm. Matter of fact, he called them, uh, the translation says, he called them halt and limp. He called them just, uh, they're just here. And the Bible says that when he assembled all of them on this mountain, and he confronted them with this truth, and he said, choose this day which God you're going to serve. When he said those things, uh, the Bible says that they just stared at him. They just stared at him. They stared at the guy who was talking about the things of God. And he goes, okay, let's go ahead and see what God can do. Let's see what the gods of the prophet of Baal can do. He said, I want the prophets of Baal to bring a sacrifice and to build an altar. I want them to slaughter it and do all their stuff that they do in order uh, to have their religious ceremonies and everything. And he goes, and, and likewise, bring me a sacrifice, and, 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 and I'm going to do something special in just a moment. But he gave them the chance, 400 um, of those prophets, to do their deal. And he said, whoever's God answers by fire from heaven and uh, takes over that sacrifice and lights it. I'm not talking about you guys squirting lighter fluid on it and throwing a match. God, a godly entity is going to have to consume that. Then that is the one true God. And the Bible says those prophets of Baal, they did what he asked and they had that altar and they were dancing and gyrating and their music was going and all the things that they were normally used to doing and stuff. And, and they began uh, getting frustrated because nothing was happening. They began cutting themselves. And as they began cutting themselves, their energy was dropping. And finally, when they just flat out dropped, he goes, Hey, did your God forget about you? Maybe he's busy. Maybe he's doing something different. Maybe he's... And, 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 and he, and he kind of taunted them. Because he knew what was going to happen soon was that his God was going to show up. And the Bible says something so important here. The Bible says, and Elijah walked over and he began repairing the altar of the Lord. Key word right there. He began repairing what used to be healthy and functional. He began repairing and bringing into, into um, newness what had weeds and spider webs all over it. God used to be worshipped there. God used to be the priority there, but that was no longer the case. Now, what has happened is it's become a pile of stones that don't mean anything anymore. And the Bible says that he began repairing the altar of the Lord. Do you want to know something? Elijah was used by God to speak to the people of Israel. Elijah was used by God to give them a place of worship. Elijah was kind of like a pastor. Elijah was kind of like what happens in churches all around this nation and this world every Sunday. That there are people who are saying, hey, let's serve God with all of our heart. Let's serve God with everything inside of us. Let's repair this place that's called worship so that we're worshiping the right thing. And the Bible said that as they did that, and he, he said, you know what, I'm so confident God's going to do something that I want you to pour water all over that thing so you don't say that it's spontaneously combusted because it's a dry day. Pour water all over so you like it. And I'll pray and I'll ask God to move. And he did and God moved. And fire came down and it absolutely ignited that whole altar. It was an amazing thing to watch. It was an amazing thing to see. You know, Elijah won that day. Elijah had a major victory as a minister that day. 
And I told you that background story because I need you to see what happened in the next chapter. Just the next chapter over. You know what Elijah should have been doing in, 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 in 1 Kings chapter 18? He should have been going down to the local prophet's pool hall and giving nucks to all his other prophet buddies for the big win that day. He should have been stoked and excited about what God did for him that day. But something so weird happened. And it proved Elijah's humanity in just the next chapter. In 1 Kings chapter 19. It says, Now Ahab went home and told Satan's sister Jezebel. And of course that's not in the Bible. I'm just joking about that. But it kind of paints the picture. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods, little g, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. In other words, I am putting it out there before all the gods that I serve, says Jezebel, that if I don't have you killed by tomorrow, I'm going to be dead just like the rest of these prophets of Baal. And instantaneously in verse 3, Elijah was afraid. Look at the context of what just happened. He just put God on the line. And after God made himself strong on his behalf, after God proved himself strong on his behalf, uh, he was able to kill off 400 prophets of Baal. Elijah was the man. He was strong. He was powerhouse at that point. And one woman who doesn't even serve the one true God, the one woman who was head of all those yahoos who couldn't call fire down from heaven, she didn't have power. But she spoke a couple words that he let get code red on him. And the Bible says very clearly that he became afraid and he ran for his life. I propose to you guys, he ran from his life. Because Elijah was doing right what he was supposed to do. Right at the time, some opposition is going to come after every victory. He ran from his life. He had said what God told him to say. He did it the way God told him to do it. He had obeyed God and he became afraid because of what one woman said. He just wiped out her army. How could she execute what she just said she'd do? And he ran. And worry oftentimes takes us out of the realm of what God wants us to do and puts us in the realm of running from that.